The Arizona Cardinals roster is barren and very, very, very not good, according to two people much smarter than me, one of whom is going to join me. You are Locked On Cardinals, your daily Arizona Cardinals podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome in Locked On Cardinals. Alex Clancy, follow me on Twitter at Clancy's Corner. Follow the podcast at Locked On AZ Cards. Please like, subscribe to the YouTube channel as well. Um, really excited to get uh, a friend of the show. I don't know if the third time is a friend of the show territory. Somebody who has always shot me straight regarding the Arizona Cardinals uh, from a national perspective. And um, yeah, let's just bring her in. Mina Kimes, <laughs> hi. How are you? Hi. I'm happy to be a friend of the show. I'm good. I like it. So at Mina Kimes on Twitter, I will mention it every time. The one percenter without a number, first name, last name, Twitter handle um, is something that's few and far between. So I, you know, I, well, I feel graced. There's only one other Mina Kimes in the world. So it wasn't too hard to, to grab. And, and you've had uh, you've had interactions with that person, haven't you? Didn't you tell uh, me that? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. One. I feel sorry for her, frankly, because <laughs> she probably gets all kinds of weird mentions and on social media like people t- try to talk to her about sports yeah no, well i mean you've got it covered all over espn uh mina kime show she had nate tice on this week uh we're going to talk about the draft and the barren nature of the arizona cardinals roster in the second segment a lot's happened since i've had you on last cliff kingsbury no longer here steve kime no longer here christmas hanukkah easter everything came early for me after the 2022 season ended and what Michael Bidwell has done from my perspective since then is done everything he said he was going to do. Change the trajectory of everything. Hired Monty Osifort, Jonathan Gannon. With the slow cycle of adding players and everything, from your perspective on March 31st, Friday, where how would you grade the Arizona Cardinals from end of 2022 to now? Uh, well, I guess it depends on whether or not they're providing free lunches finally. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> uh because that they got a f for that i think right or sure d did. um no from just football perspective um i think the optimistic view is that they were honest with where they were as a franchise you know and um, there there's a world there's certainly a world in which uh, the bidwell family could have stuck with climb Kim and kingsbury especially after giving them those big extensions and um I would have disagreed with that decision, frankly. So for them to actually wipe the slate clean, start over. Uh, and then I think when you look at this, you know, this is the team that did, obviously didn't do a lot in free agency and has been uh, pretty quiet. But again, that's self-awareness, right? Because um, it would have been silly for this team to go out and sign big veteran free age, you know, big veterans to big contracts, uh, knowing that they're probably not going to be competitive in 2023. Uh, so This is a reset. It's undeniably a reset, but sometimes teams aren't willing to actually do that. So I think the the positive cases is is the fact that they were willing to actually go through with it and rip the Band-Aid. Yeah, for sure. I mean, it's it's unapologetically obvious what's going on. And I know they've been getting massive, massively terrible grades for free agency this year, and rightfully so. I agree with you. You know, there's a couple things going against them, one of which is Kyler Murray's injury. If you were ready for week one, maybe things would be a little bit different. I think that's pretty obvious. But there are a couple names that one of whom you talked about on your most recent podcast, Mina Kime Show, uh, Buda Baker, and DeAndre Hopkins, two guys that I am in the camp and feel free, uh, but I'm in the camp that they need to retain DeAndre Hopkins as backward as that sounds. Getting a third or fourth round pick for him at this point at 31, I would rather have an A plus receiver at 31 play 10 games a year yeah. than a B minus receiver play 17. So let's start with him. If they retain him, give him some some extra cheese because he has no guaranteed money on his contract is currently constructed. Would that be the antithesis of what should happen, or is there some merit to it? No, I, I agree with you, actually. Um, at first, I think before free agency started, I thought they should trade DeAndre Hopkins. But then mm-hmm. when I started seeing really like how diminished wide receiver value was um, and, and you know how little – um, the mark, I mean, what we're hearing is that it wouldn't be a second or a first round pick. And, you know, my feeling is, yeah, if you can't get 
you know, a, a decent return for him. He's not taking roster space that you'd be spending elsewhere right now. Um, I actually still think he's a good player. I say actually because it feels like perception of him is actually pretty low. Um, to me, it, at least it's I, I think he's better than what the perception seems to be right now, at least based on the the trade talk. Um, so yeah, I, I, for me, it, it really is about trade value. If you can't get that much for him, I don't really see the point of moving on. Um, and honestly, like it's it's something you can also reevaluate mid season when teams are more desperate. Right now, it seems like there's not a huge market out there, but that might change in October or whatever. So uh, I think you might as well just hold on to him and see what happens. And for shame to anybody who tries to compare Brandon Cooks to DeAndre Hopkins. How dare yeah. you with the five <laughs> and the six? Uh, and for me, it's like, you know what? Front load him, extend him three years, restructure, give him 20 mil this year, make him happy to be here. My biggest fear that actually came to, to pass last year was DeAndre Hopkins and uh, Hollywood Brown not playing meaningful snaps together. And they just high-fived. One got hurt. DeAndre Hopkins came yeah. back. And the truth was realized, especially after Kyler Murray's injury. So... I feel like it's a fool's errand to look, not look at 2024 and see the two receivers you could have when with a healthy Kyler Murray. Now, Buda Baker, Buda Baker to me, and you could tell your little ditty if you'd like when you talked to him about him at the Pro Bowl that you talked about on your podcast, but he's the closest thing to Larry Fitzgerald the Cardinals have. And yeah. if you look at Buda Baker, he's under contract through 2024. You give him whatever he wants now to ensure that he's here until 32 or 33 to be the anchor for not only the defense, but for this team. Right move, wrong move. No, 100%. I, I think I've talked about this before with rebuilds. You have to have pillars. You know, yes, you can strip a team down to its bones and trade away veterans and not give guys big contracts, but you, you got to have, at least I think, and, this, and I've talked to players about this too, like one or two culture setters on both sides of the football. Um, you know, for Atlanta for years, it was Grady Jerry, right? You know, mm -hmm. And I think Buddha is undeniably that guy in Arizona, a player who, despite the fact that at times that defense has been a tire fire around him, has continued to play an extraordinarily high level, continued to play really hard too, frankly, um, just like a, a real like competitive monster um, who plays a position where, you know, I, the, I don't think there are that many players in the NFL free safeties who, who play at that level. So, you know, he's still in the prime of his career. I think he's someone you definitely want to keep in the building also. And this is what I talked about on my podcast, a lovely guy, kind of like yeah. a quirky, quirky, weird dude. Um, but uh, yeah, very funny. He's, he's quite a home buddy too, which I found pretty funny. Yeah, for sure. I mean, yeah, he's got, he'll kill people with a smile on his face. I mean, it's very rare that you can get a second crack like they had with Teron Matthew and actually be able to do it right. So I think you just give him all of Midas's gold and just hope that he doesn't request a trade. Uh, Mina Kimes and Mina Kimes on Twitter, the Mina Kimes show. Um, we're going to, let's just, let's just do it. We're going to talk about the draft next. Uh, Mina Kimes agrees with me about something else, which is fantastic. We'll hit that next as Lockdown <laughs> Cardinals rolls on. Uh, this episode of Lockdown Cardinals is brought to you by Built Bar. Uh, Built Bar has been around for a long time with us. I love them. They're all covered in 100% chocolate. Think of like, so I've told you that I have a cake problem during the holidays. This is a perfect substitute for that. The macros are insane. 17 grams of protein, high fiber, low sugar, low calories, covered in 100% chocolate. And now you don't have to go to built.com to get them. You can go to Sam's Club. You can go to Walmart and get them there. And also built.com. Just do it. Just do it. Built.com. Uh, I love them. They're my favorite child sponsors that we have. Don't tell anybody else. Locked on Cardinals, your team every day. Alex Clancy. Follow me on Twitter, Clancy's Corner. Please go like, subscribe to the YouTube channel as well if you so desire. Leave a comment, and then the comments have been on fire. I talked yesterday, Mina, about how the Cardinals should remove the bird from the helmet. And, I mean, I got eviscerated like they should explode State Farm Stadium. It's <laughs> it's a It's a target for perennial dysfunction and losing remove it the bird yeah get the the bird is like football jerseys uniforms aren't the sexiest to begin with like there are color schemes that are but like in a vacuum football there's nothing pretty really about them that helmet is lowest on the total bowl for me like do you think that's insane before we move I, on to more important I things 
kind of cute. I like it's like a little angry looking bird, you know, has that little beak. Um, I don't have strong feelings about, <laughs> about the bird, I gotta say. I, that's okay. That, that's exactly, that's rational. That's where you should be. So the draft, third overall pick, Will Anderson, a bust, has a huge uh, crowd in, in Phoenix. I've been on team trade back because I've oh, said- Oh, Will Anderson or bust. I think you said Will, Will Anderson or a bust. And my eyebrows flew off my head. I was like, uh, people are saying Will Anderson is going to be a bust. Okay, no, got it. Will yeah, Anderson yeah. or bust. And I'm yeah. in the camp that, and I've talked to you about this. I, I use this terminology. Steve Kime didn't eat his vegetables for four first rounds in a row. Yeah. Two like two inside linebackers traded for Hollywood Brown with with Tyler Linderbaum sitting right there last year, like drafting Trey McBride, like it was terrible. So Steve Keim is like the friend that you had growing up who would come play with all your toys and not help you clean up and just leave. That's what he did with the Arizona Cardinals. So I don't think that they deserve to draft Will Anderson when they have the potential to trade back, get a future first, get some more capital this year. At three. Should they be seeking out a trade mm. partner or is this a, we'll see what happens within, you know, 24 hours of the draft when things get weird. Well, I think they should be active in looking for it largely because of the state of the roster. Um, this is what Nate and I talked about on my show, just the defense, just so many needs in that on the defensive line. And then in the secondary as well. Um, it's, 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 it's a tough spot on that side of the ball in particular. <laughs> Uh, and so I think, you know, the way things are shaking out in the draft right now, obviously it's going to go quarterback one, two, but let's say Anthony Richardson goes first as possible, or let's say he's still on the board at three. There's a lot of teams who are in love with him. And if there's a trade partner out there who's willing to move up from uh, there are multiple teams, by the way, you know, it could be anything from the Raiders at seven wanting to jump the Colts to i don't know like the vikings or like there's some I, there's a lot of teams out there you might not think in your head right now need quarterbacks who i guarantee you are considering them and so like I, the bucks whatever but if there's a team like that willing to make that jump to the point where you'd stay in the first round and as you said get another first round pick next year i i do think you have to seriously consider it and as people who are listening who know i'm a seahawks fan and say she just wants will anderson to fall to the seahawks <laughs> I do want Will Anderson to follow Seahawks, but I also I also really really believe um, you know I, I said this about the Bears Alex to me who I felt I, I felt like that defense was in a comparable state to Arizona. Now they went out and spent a ton of free agency. They're in a different timeline, but um, you know just a very very especially the front seven in particular. They went out and got some linebackers, but that defensive line needs so much help. So for them, I felt like it wasn't just. There was this, some Bears fans thought, well, you don't want to move out of the territory for Will Anderson or potentially Jalen Carter. My feeling was as much as we do view those as the two blue chip defensive prospects in the draft, if your roster is such where you just got to take some shots on goal, you really do have to be open to a trade that can get you those shots. And I'll say this too. I, I love Will Anderson. I don't, but candidly, I don't view him as like a Miles Garrett type of mm -hmm. prospect. I think he, he could be a really, really good player and I really, really like him, but um, I wouldn't put him personally on the tier with some of the really like, mm, just not flawless, but like almost flawless edge prospects in the class. So I don't think you would be passing up on the next necessarily Garrett. Yeah, see, that's interesting because uh, it's – I always – I don't know why. I always talk in fantasy football where it's like the reason why you don't draft the quarterback in the first round is because you can get Kirk Cousins in the 10th. If the Cardinals have the ability to draft a Kirk Cousins that's comparable enough to Will Anderson like a Tyree Wilson or even a, like Christian Gonzalez or one of the offensive linemen if they move back to Tennessee, if Tennessee wants to give a you know Trey Lance Another package or whatever to move up. The team, yeah, yeah. There's, there's so many possibilities and – it's like, so there's that. So say they move back to seven or 11 or whatever. Whoever's going to draft a quarterback this year, 100% could be the worst team in the NFL, which in turn could put the Cardinals in a very, very yeah. Caleb Williams -ish situation. Who's going to get probably the most capital out of any quarterback, right? Ever? Uh, yes. And, if there's, there's and a trade back. boy, it's not just him in that class. I mean, I've been watching UNC, mm -hmm. Drake May. Who, buddy? Yeah. Um, yeah, so to have a top pick again, you know, assuming Arizona sticks with Kyler and he comes back healthy, that pick's gonna be worth insane value in next year's draft. 
Um, this is sort of tangential, but I get, well, I guess it's not tangential, but my, uh, a friend of mine who's Sean from Seabeck is his handle. He works for Sumer Sports, which is an analytics company. He just did a great article about how teams routinely undervalue future draft picks. They, they tend to be worth much more than it seems when you trade for them. And also most teams, you know, who, uh, trade partners in the first round are you tend to be worse the next year than you think they will be. Statistically, this has been shown. So you might think, well, we're trading with the Titans. The Titans have been okay. But more likely than not, based on history, that pick it will be worth more than your val- it's being valued at right now. Um, teams are just impatient when it comes to the draft. Well, I mean, and look who's picking number five. There were yeah. Super Bowl aspirations for said Denver Broncos last year. So, I mean, yeah. you actually have to play the games. This isn't mad and uneasy. So it's really interesting because that's true. And I've once you jump over that line, you're like, okay, I'm okay with doing a daily podcast on a team that's going to be absolutely atrocious for the greater <laughs> good 365 days from now. It's going to be two off seasons. Look at the 49ers. Like, I know that they've – They've gone from borderline teetering on dysfunctional Lenny to that's my dog. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, it means to, I have delivery. To being one of the best run organizations in the world yeah. for two off seasons. Yeah. So, I mean, so when you see the Cardinals, and I'll get you out of here on this. Your ideal. <laughs> oh, it's fine. I, I mean, I love a Cardinals. Your ideal move for them is to trade back at all costs. No, trade back for the right package with the right partner i do think will anderson is i would put carter in this tier as well um he is better than the next tier of edge rushers to the point where um you know you there's gonna be some hesitation there right because as much as you need shots and goal as much as you need players um he is i think a much more reliable prospect than some of the other guys however if you get the right package, you know, and if a team's willing to come up and you get get another first in the mix, then I think you have to seriously consider it um, just because of the state of this team and uh, what we've been talking about, which is sort of the realism with which they've approached this offseason. Mina Kimes all over ESPN, Mina Kimes show podcast. Is it weekly? Weekly, right? It's it's bi-weekly during the season and weekly uh, during the offseason. Check it out. Field Yates and Nate Tice, the last two episodes, two of the best. Mina, thanks so much. I really appreciate it. Thanks for having me. Sorry about Lenny. <laughs> yeah, well, tell Lenny that he can come on anytime he wants. He must He must have been <laughs> disagree with my take. Um, awesome. All right, yeah. it was good to see you. Yeah, you too. Up. Have a good day. <laughs> Bye. Bye. That was Mina Kimes, one of the best in the absolute business, one of the absolute best in the business, I should say. Next, I'm going to break down what she said. And, you know, the reason why I love having smarter people on the podcast than me so I can react to higher level thinking. That's next, Locked On Cardinals, your team every day. This episode of Locked On Cardinals is brought to you by FanDuel. Tournament heating up. Final four, baby. There's no better place to get on the action than FanDuel, America's number one sportsman. That's because right now FanDuel is giving new customers a no-sweat first bet up to $1,000. That's up to $1,000 back in bonus bets if your first bet doesn't win. Just go to FanDuel.com slash Locked On. And sign up today to claim your no sweat first bet. Then you could wager on everything from the money line to point spreads to which team will be cutting down the nets. All on an app that's safe, secure, and super easy to use. So don't miss your shot at a no sweat first bet up to $1,000. When you join FanDuel today, just go to fanduel.com slash locked on to sign up. Make every moment more with FanDuel. So listen. The last couple of times I've had Mina on, we talked a lot about Cliff. We talked a lot about Steve Kahn. We talked a lot about in-season. Now, her thought process on the Cardinals is one that I was kind of surprised initially, at least. Because, I mean, the Cardinals have been getting lambasted from national media just about having a terrible 2023 offseason. And there's so many question marks. Kyler Murray, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But what she said, which I think is right, is they know – they're wearing the stripes that they know that they need to wear right now. They know exactly who they are. And they're a team that's optimizing for 2024. Very few moves uh, this offseason. I mean, because you're white from Philly, getting a two-year deal following Jonathan Gannon and Nick Rallis, I think was the biggest splash. Sure, they, you know, they brought back Will, Will Hernandez, but like, 
They've done nothing. The Cardinals have done nothing. And understanding who they are and what they need to be and position themselves as shows forward thinking that we haven't seen as much over the last decade. Now, this is completely different, but 2018 was a perfect example. 2018, after 2018, Steve Kime should have been fired with Steve Wilkes and Al Holcomb, and they should have reset then. They didn't. They hired a college coach who never won, and then it was, you know, perpetuated for another four seasons. Now it feels different, and not just because Steve Kime and Cliff Kingsbury aren't here, but it feels like there's – they can see the forest through the trees feel to it, which is a huge graduation from what we've seen over the last handful of years where you're putting Band-Aids and crazy glue over massive cracks in the foundation of the organization. So when Mina brought that up and she sided with me, and it's not about agreeing or anything. You know, I, I love when people disagree. I mean, it's it, it's great it, it's great fodder and it, it's great content. But when she she's like, yeah, they know exactly what they need to do. This is exactly what needs to happen to hit, you know, rock bottom is what I called it in an effort to rebuild. And she agreed with me as well, which was interesting about DeAndre Hopkins and Buda Baker, both of whom I've said they need, the Cardinals need to retain, extend, retain, restructure where need be. Obviously, DeAndre Hopkins has no guaranteed money in his contract currently, but they need, and, he, and she called them pillars, which is what I've called. Thank you. If, if you've been listening for the last five or six seasons, I've, I call the strong people on the team pillars uh, for, you know, for the team to be built around. So it's very, very interesting to hear it said from somebody else. And yeah, again, give her a follow at Mina Kime. She's she's the best. Uh, I get her on once or twice a year. I know she's super busy, but it's always a treat to get her on and have her elevated level thinking, analytics based, you know, and, and again, from a from a national media perspective as well, who don't talk about the Cardinals every day. You know, to come in and say, you know what, they're doing kind of exactly what they need to do. It's going to be ugly. But they're doing exactly what needs to be done. And, uh, and pertaining to the draft, the trade backs, like there are a lot of teams that if they do trade up to number three and give the Cardinals a package for it, for the Cardinals to trade back, there is a very, very good chance, let's say above average chance, that if that team were to draft Anthony Richardson or another rookie at three, not going to look at another rookie quarterback at three, the that pick will be a top 10 pick for 2024, probably coupled with an Arizona Cardinals top 10 pick if Kyler Murray doesn't come back for the first seven or eight weeks. And because of how many needs the Cardinals have, one of the only upsides to that is they could draft any position pretty much, even though, sure, edge rusher, interior defensive line. But, I mean, offensive line and corner are both massive needs as well. So if the Cardinals do trade back to seven or 11 with Tennessee even, and you can get a corner and offensive line, it's going to better the roster. And that's the big goal for the next 20 months. Make this roster better. I guess not 20 months at this point, 12 months, 13 months, 15 months with free agency and the draft next year also, is to make this roster better. And by trading back, drafting a position of need, and getting a first or and or second, a first and second next year, and probably another pick this year, that's where it gets fun because there's possibilities. There's excitement for the future and not a, oh, I hope that the Cardinals can keep it together and maybe sign a couple of free agents like we've seen over the last handful of seasons. Alex Lancey, Locked on Cardinals. Have a good weekend. I'll talk to you Monday.